Hello everyone and welcome back for another uh, video. This time we're going to play Going Medieval. It's an interesting early access game. A lot of people compare it with RimWorld due to a lot of similar mechanics. But let's delve into it. Let's have a look. We're going to start a new game in the standard difficulty and normal. And we are going to play the Lone Wolf scenario. This is an interesting scenario where you start with a single settler with very little resources during winter and you need to struggle and uh, try to survive and slowly build up your settlement. So let's give our settlement a name. Let's go with Orgar's Week. Now we have a few different types of maps we can choose. We can go with a valley, hillside or mountain. Each one has different resources and a different layout. For this playthrough, let's go for hillside. A bit of an uneven terrain. Um, good to exploit for high ground and stuff like that. And it has a very good amount of clay and limestone, which are resources we're going to use a lot for this playthrough. And let's just pick a random starting seed and let's continue. Now we need to choose our first settler. So the game gave us Alfred, who seemed to have a few decent sort of skills, but not exactly what we are after for the time. So let's randomize and see if we can get something a bit more um, suitable for what we are after. So this star, if they have a s one star, it means that they are passionate about this job, so they will learn faster and they will be happier performing this one. But um, they can even have two stars, which makes them very passionate about it. Let's see. This one doesn't look that bad, so she is very passionate about being a marksman, which is quite handy. Especially early on, since we will be depending on her ability with a bow to hunt some uh, animals, so we can have some food during winter. Uh, medicine is a good skill to have. Culinary, so she will be effective at cooking and um, butchering animals. And a pretty decent skill of botany, which will help uh, with planting seeds and stuff like that. Let's have a look at um, the perks she has. So... Her favorite, her favorite trick is eating horseshoe nails or soap. Well, the girl is hardcore. It's a special talent to be able to eat less, literally, anything. Okay, so consumption duration minus 40%. So that sounds like she won't need as much food as someone else, which is very helpful, especially in a um, scenario where food will be scarce. And she's a dullard, she's not exactly intelligent, she's slow to acquire XP, and she's clumsy. Which shouldn't be too much of a problem. I think that will be a good settler to begin with. Her background, she is a loyal gardener. She found peace in the waste, in the wattle fences of the garden, filled with the scented flowers and herbs. She knew their properties well as food and medicine. Time stood still under the trellises, and she would bathe in the scent of the new growth. Following the plague, pledged loyalty felt it to King Edmund, who was ordained to rule and bring England back into harmony and balance. She would gladly put anyone who disagreed with her to the sword. Death would be swift and merciful. Interesting. So, she has a little bit of a melee experience as well. And she is an Oak Brethren. brethren. So there are two types of religions religious alignments in this game, the Oak Brethren and um, the Retributionists, Restitutionists. Very different. There is The mechanic in the game is not really implemented just yet, but I'm looking forward to what they're going to do with it. 
So let's get started. Through a blizzard, the last hunting party of the several of the year returns. One member is missing, presumed dead. Apart from what passes for civilization, Christiana is on her own. She grits her teeth and resolves to build a home in the wilderness, to shelter from the biting cold. The only sound is the distant call of wolves. Christiana is confident, defiant even. I will make this work. I will take my share of land. I will build there, and I will defend it. Many have tried, some have fallen, beset by bandits, defeated by drought, yet many have also prevailed. I must have faith. The place I found will stand centuries from now. My descendants may be there still. After many travels, she arrived in the valley with golden plains, cut through by a snaking river. For Christiana, it's conjured, it conjured visions of bountiful harvests, song and wine. A place to put down roots, a homeland. She decided to title it Organs Week. Okay, let's pause the game. Now, let's have a look around what kind of terrain we have to work with and what type of resources. So, we have a fair bit of clay over here, about 163, which will be very helpful early on. Uh, we have a little bit of iron, a lot more clay here, more clay, a little bit of limestone, a few trees, we're pretty close on the edge of the map. Okay, let's get started. So, first of all, all those items down here that have this hand with the X, it means that they are forbidden to be picked up. So first we need to allow them. So we'll click on this uh, icon over here that says allow, select all layers and allow. And we're going to highlight all those items. This will allow our settlers to pick them up and um, utilize them. So first we need to build um, a little bit of a salt settler shelter so let's build one out of clay wall since we have plenty let's go with um, five long two wide and another five let's put a wooden door over here and let's put a little window we will need some flooring And we also need a sleeping spot, and we also will need a brazier to keep things warm. Especially since this is the first day of winter and it's only going to get colder. I mean, it's already minus 11.5 Celsius, which is quite cold. And of course, last but not least, we're gonna need um, a roof. I will not utilize an actual roof for this first building, but instead I will put some um, wooden tiles on top, since I plan on building on top of this, make this like a second story. But this is um, a bit of a plan for the future. So to get this building we will need to pick up a bit of uh, hay, so I'll mark this hay for um, collection. and couple more bits of it, about 90 hay, so we have enough for the first couple settlers. And we will need to collect some clay. The good thing is, with this clay that is over here, it's free game, we don't need to dig it, so us, our settler can just go pick it up and utilize it, which should be enough to get us started. And also, we will need to chop down a few trees, so I'll just mark a few of them from har for harvesting. So we get the basic resources out of the way. Okay. Now, after we collect all those resources, we need somewhere to place them. So we will go create a zone, a default stockpile, and for the time being I'll just put it right here. I'll make it a small 5x5. Five five. And we're also going to make a dumping stockpile. We'll talk more about that as the game progresses. 
so for the dumping stock pile I want uh, human carcasses to be taken to it because I do not plan on utilizing those so we will either burn them or uh, put them to the ground we do not want the animal carcasses to go there we will make our settlers move them into a different stockpile into a building that will actually process them and we want all waste to be moved over here meanwhile on our good stockpile we do not want um, human carcasses but we will allow the animal ones for now uh, we want all types of apparel, food, material, textiles, warfare. We do not want waste over here. We want all of the waste to be up here on the dumping stockpile. And let's uh, unpause the game. Let's let our settlers start doing their thing. So first we need to look at the jobs and uh, give them the right priorities for those jobs. So. I like to put tent and convalence as one because it's very important for them to remain healthy and tend to each other's wound. As well as haul. I like to have them pick up all the items and bring them in quickly. Now, since he's going to be our hunter, at least to get to start with, I will make hunting two and then I will make cooking as well too. Which means, if she, can, if she has a hunting target, she will go hunt before she cooks, because the priorities go from the left to the right. So, first go hunt, and then utilize your free time to cook. Uh, cut plants should remain as three. Same with construction. So, if you have materials, construct. If you don't, go cut trees. As for schedule, so for our settlers we need to give them a schedule, we need to tell them what they can do, how they can do it, and at what frequency they can do it. So as a standard they need 6 hours of sleep, I like to give them an hour of uh, anything which they can utilize for whatever they like, 2 hours of leisure because they have other needs as well, they need to pray, they need to entertain themselves by playing Bagamon or spend their time doing other things and then I'm going to make them work until about 7 where I will give them another 2 hours of leisure and another hour of anything so if they need more leisure they will utilize this hour for that if they need to go eat they will utilize this hour for that if they need sleep they will go get some sleep or if they have nothing better to do, they'll go work. And then we have the Manage screen. So, first we have to set their undrafted stance. I like to set this to aggressive, so if something approaches them, so like a wolf, they will try to fight back into the fleeing. Manage weapon. We can tell them what weapons to use or not to use. I will set her. I will set Christiana with a, a ranged weapon because she will need a ranged weapon to hunt. She doesn't need a shield. She can use any type of headgear headgear we have available, and she can wear any type of armor. Now for food, we can tell her to not eat any food. Only eat raw ingredients. Eat meals. Be a cannibal. Or this was something I was playing with on a previous game. It's a custom uh, food preference with, which would allow them to eat pretty much whatever is available. But for now we're gonna go with meal. I want them to eat full meals with high nutrition. That way they stay happier and they are more effective as well. And she is already having a lot of progress. Building this place, very good. I will select her and make her collect the grass before it dies out from winter. Because then we won't be able to collect hay and we won't um, have the option of making a bed, which will be very bad. How much do we need for one bed? Let's see. We need 
where are the beds? The beds are in the furniture, of course they are, 15. So with 30 we should be good to make two hay sleeping spots, which should be enough for two people. And for the brazier we need clay and wood, which we have plenty to, to get started. That's good. So at the moment, this is the elevation we're looking at, 16 points out of 16. We can press this button to go down a layer, or this button to go up a layer, or we can use um, the keyboard and the mouse by holding control and using the mouse wheel. And when we roll it down, it, it changes to 12.5, 12, 11. This will help us have a better look on a specific layer. So now I can look inside the building and see what's happening. She's having some food and she looks quite happy. Let's look at her mood. She has her initial optimism. She is happy with the job she's doing. Her entertainment needs are filled. She ate a nice meal, but she doesn't like what she's wearing. Probably because it is of a very poor quantity quality. Yes, and very damaged, 15 out of 136 hit points. So gear actually deteriorates in this game. So let's speed up the game just a little bit. And the game is telling us we don't have enough food, which is fine. We will get right on that as soon as possible. Now, resources actually decay if they are not properly preserved. So if we look at this wooden spear, it decomposes because the ground type. So at the moment this is on soil and soil doesn't exactly protect it. So if we put um, a wooden floor or um, a weaker floor that will protect it from uh, the elements. Same with food. Food can decay because of the ground type, or being exposed to exposed to high temperature, or being uh, completely uncovered, not having a roof above it. So once we have this here ready, we will have to plan our next step. I know around the middle of winter we're going to get a second person, so I want to be sort of ready for it. So we will use the next couple days just to collect a few resources and build a very small stockpile. And looking around, can we see any easy animals that we can hunt? Oh, there is a couple of hair here. Let's mark those for hunting. Is there anything else? That looks to be the... There are a few deer here, but they are harder to cut. So, let's start with the hare and go from there. Just need a little bit more wood to finish um, the building. So, every time they cut a tree, they have to take the resources, take them to the stockpile, and then they become available to be used. So stockpiles and having them in close proximity of where you want to use the resources are really, really important. Come on, Christiana. It's almost the first night, and you will probably end up sleeping in a proper shelter. Getting the last piece of wood. And she failed. So if their skill is too low, they will actually fail to perform the task. So in this case, she's utilizing her construction skill to build this building. I believe the resources are lost when they try and they fail. So I'll pause the game here. If she sleeps in this one without it being complete, she's going to get a negative moodlet. But since all that's missing at the moment is this little tile, I will wake her up and make her finish it. We'll try finishing it. Very good. 
So now you can see that the room got an attribute. It became a bedroom, which gives their the settlers a positive moodlet. And we will stop here for the first episode. We'll come back the next time where we're going to look at how we're going to build a more stable food supply. Thanks for watching and see you soon.